Okay, guys, we are on section 1.5, quadratic equations. Okay, um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the general form of a quadratic function. General form of a quadratic whoops, function, and that's going to be a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. And those A, B, and C's are going to be integers. So it's going to be something like 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Okay? And you need to remember what it means to solve a quadratic. So to solve a quadratic... That means we are finding where the graph hits the x-axis. Okay, we're looking for x-intercepts when we're solving is what we're doing. Uh, these x-intercepts can also be called zeros, roots, and solutions. Okay, so pretty much what happens is our picture, our graph, might look something like, let's say it looks like this. And the points here. And if we are looking for the solutions, if we're going to solve, we're looking for the solutions, x-intercepts, roots, uh, zeros. And we go, okay, well, that's just where the graph hits the x-axis. So, it hits the x-axis at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. And x equals negative 2. Now, we will do that with equations, not just with graphs. So let's talk about ways to solve a quadratic if it's an equation. Ways to solve a quadratic. Okay. We can do that by factoring. We can do that by what we call the square root property. Okay, we can do that by completing the square. And we can do that by the quadratic formula. So, let's talk about factoring when the leading coefficient is 1. So, we've got factoring when the leading coefficient is 1. Okay? That just means when A equals 1. Okay? So, let's look at an example. Example 1 says solve by factoring, of course. And it's on me my pencil slow. I may have to do a little juice there. Solve by factoring. And they give me x squared minus 13x plus 36 equals 0. 
Now, I note here that A is 1 because think about it. If a uh, general form is AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0, in this particular case, A equals 1. Since there's not a number in front of X squared, that's assumed to be 1. B here is negative 13 and C is 36. We don't necessarily need that for this problem. But we're going to go ahead and write that, okay? Now, so we have a leading coefficient of 1. So this falls into the discussion of when the leading coefficient is 1. The first thing, we're going to write a couple of steps here. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to set it equal to 0. Or we need to make sure it's set equal to 0. So we're going to say set equal... To zero. Well, is it set equal to zero? Yes, we're good. Now we're going to look for look for GCF, which is what greatest common factor, and that should be an O. And it doesn't look like an O; it looks like an A. Greatest common factor. Okay, well, that means is there a number out of those three numbers right here, 1, negative 13, and 36, or is there a letter in all four terms, or is there a number that will go into 1, 13, and 36 other than 1? And in this case, there's not 1, okay? Well, if we don't have a GCF to bring out, now we do our multiply slash combine. So what we're trying to do is go back to the parentheses part. Remember in the last section or two we'd have those parentheses that set by each other and we would FOIL or we would distribute. Well this is what happened once we FOIL or distribute. Now we want to go backwards to the parentheses. So the way we do that is we say what multiplies to be the constant. Here the constant is 36. So it multiplies to be the number that has no letter. So we say multiplies to be 36. We want two numbers that multiply to be 36. And they combine to be negative 13. So the easiest thing you can do is start thinking of multiples of what multiplies to be 36. Well, 1 times 36 does, but it's not going to add or subtract to be negative 13. Okay, well, what about 2 times 18? Yeah, 2 times 18 makes 36, but that's still not going to give me a 13. What about a 3 times a 12? Yeah, it makes 36, but it's not going to make 13 either. What about 4 times 9? Hmm, well, positive 4 times positive 9 is 36, and positive 4 plus positive 9 is 13. Well, I need a negative 13. Okay, well, if I say negative 4 times negative 9, I still get a positive 36. And I know that negative 4 plus negative 9 gives me a negative 13. So I see that my two factors are negative 4 and negative 9. So, once I figured out what they are, I go down here, I set up my parentheses, it's still equal to 0. All we're doing is rewriting the x squared minus 13x plus 36 in terms of parentheses. Okay? Now, I'm going to put x in the front because x times x does give me x squared. And then what did I find my factors to be? A negative 4 and a negative 9. So I say x minus 4, x minus 9 equals 0. Okay? Now, it says to solve. That means I need an answer of x equals at the end. Well, once I multiply and combine, then my last step is to set... Each parenthesis equal to zero and solve. Okay, so I take my set of parentheses, which I have x minus 4. I'm going to set it equal to zero. 
and I take x minus 9 and I set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 4 to both sides and that's going to give me x equals 4 as an answer. I'm going to add 9 to both sides and that's going to give me x equals 9 as an answer. Okay? Let's try, we're going to say that's part A, and I want to give you another one. Let's do a part B. So we can just practice a little bit more, and you'll see it's not so long. Um, let's do x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. Okay, so first step, set equal to 0. That's check. That's done. Okay, set equal to zero. Now we want to look for a greatest common factor. Well, I've got A equals one. I've got B equals six. I've got C equals negative 16. There's nothing that's going to go into one, six, and negative 16. So we're done. That's none. Okay, so now I'm ready to multiply, combine. Now remember, we're multiplying to be the thing that does not have an x with it. So I'm looking for what multiplies to be negative 16 and combines to be a positive 6. Okay, well, 1 and 16 don't do me much good. What about 2 and 8? Well, a positive 2 and a positive 8 make a positive 16. Okay, well, what about a positive 2 and a negative 8? Well, that makes a negative 16, but what's 2 plus negative 8? Well, that's negative 6. I want a positive 6. Okay, so let's try a negative 2 times 8. Well, that's still negative 16. And then what's negative 2 plus 8? Well, that's a positive 6. So I find that it is negative 2 and positive 8. I set up my parentheses. I've got x minus 2. I've got x plus 8. Okay. That's going to give me Now I'm ready. Okay, what did I do? I set it equal to zero. I got my greatest common factor. There wasn't any. Then I multiplied, combined. Now I'm ready to set each parentheses equal to zero. So I've got x minus 2 equals zero, and I've got x plus 8 equals zero. Let's solve. x equals 2. x equals negative 8. Okay. Okay, let's talk about factoring with a leading coefficient other than 1. Because right now these are the friendly ones. We had 1 in the front. Okay, so let's look at factoring um, leading coefficient. other than 1. Okay. Factoring with a leading coefficient other than 1. So, let's look at example 2. We have solve by factoring. And I'm going to show y'all an easier way to do this than probably what you were shown in high school. Okay? Um, steps are kind of still the same to start with. We're going to set equal to 0. And I have 4x squared. Let's write the problem down. Minus 13x equals negative 3. Okay, so this time we need to move it over. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I know that nothing's going to combine there. So I get 4x squared minus 13x plus 3 equals 0. 
okay? Same concept, I'm going to look for my greatest common factor. Well, I see here I have A equals 4, B equals negative 13, C equals 3. There's not an X in all three parts. There's not a number that goes into 4, negative 13, and 3 other than 1. So that's a no on the GCF. So now we're going to do what we call, some people call it circle multiply, some people call it slide and divide. I call it circle multiply because that's what we do, and, but then you have to go back and divide. So we could call it circle multiply then divide, okay? So the first thing that you do here, this has several different parts, is we're going to multiply the leading coefficient multiply that leading coefficient by the constant. So what we're doing is we're multiplying A times C. Okay, there's where the circle comes from. I circle the 4 and I multiply it times the 3 and make a new equation. Make a new equation. Okay, so that gives me x squared minus 13x plus 12 equals 0. Notice that leading coefficient is now 1 instead of 4. Okay, now I simply want to, oh, I don't want to go over the other. I'm still on my circle multiply. Uh, circle multiply divide. Now, so we made our new equation. We'll actually make that. There we go. Make new equation. All right. Now we want to factor the new equation. Okay. So I'm going what multiplies. I'm going to write up here what multiplies to be a positive 12. And adds, or combines, I'm sorry, and combines to be a negative 13. Well, that one's pretty easy. That's going to be a negative 1 times a negative 12 makes a positive 12. And, of course, negative 1 plus negative 12 equals negative 13. Okay. So, I set my parentheses because it told me to factor it. And I've got my x, my x, minus 1, minus 12. Okay. Now, we can't go ahead and uh, set those equal to 0 because what did we do over there? We circled that 4 and we multiplied it times 3. So we go back and divide by the circle. Or you're dividing by A. Divide by A. Okay, so I've got to go back now and divide by 4. And when I say divide by 4, you're dividing that actual integer that you got by 4. Okay, so we divided by 4. Now we want to reduce and move. Okay. So what that means is, if in your parentheses, that fraction that you made, if it'll reduce, reduce it. If not, the, the denominator is going to come to the front. So I see this 4 right here, and I know I can't reduce 1 over 4, so this 4 is going to need to come up to the front. So that's going to give me 4x minus 1. Now... This next one actually reduces. What is 12 over 4? Well, that's 3. That's x minus 3 equals 0. This you have now factored. This is factored. You've now factored the original equation. If we're looking for the factor, that's the factored form. Now we're ready to set each part equal to 0. Uh, once factored, set equal to 0. So now I have 4x minus 1 equals 0, and I have x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to solve both of those. That's going to give me 4x equals 1. Divide by 4, x equals 1 fourth. Add 3, add 3. I get x equals 3. And I'm just going to write that down there. So I get x equals 3. 
and I get x equals 1 fourth. Okay? Let's do another. This one, this one's going to be a little bit different. It's actually easier. Actually makes use. Example 3 makes use of factor of greatest common factor. You'll like this one, okay? So let's look at example 3. It says we want to factor and solve. Did example 2 tell me to factor also or just say solve by factoring? Okay. So we might put that just in like a squiggly box there in case you're looking for the factored form. So example 3 has 3x squared plus 12x equals 0. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to ask myself, it likes to keep telling me my pencil's low, doesn't it? I'm going to have to break this into two parts anyway. This lesson's long. Uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to set it equal to zero. Okay, is it set equal to zero? Yes. Now, you'll notice it's missing a part here, which is fine. So, uh, it is set equal to zero. You're okay. That's all you can do with that. So, now we need to get a greatest common factor. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a, let's look. So I have the numbers 3, I'm looking for my GCF here. I've got 3 and 12. Okay, well what will go into both 3 and 12? Well, 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3, and then what do I have, what letter do I have in each part? We'll have an X in each part. So I'm going to factor out a 3X. And so then I ask myself, 3X times what gives me 3X squared? Well, 3X times X gives me 3x squared because if I were to go back and distribute that I would get a 3x squared. Now I ask myself 3x times what gives me 12x. Well that's plus 4 equals 0. Okay so now I have now I have factored. You guys this is factored right here. I know sometimes it's hard to tell. That's your factored form. Now we're ready to set each part equal to 0. So I've got 3x equals 0. I've got x plus 4 equals 0. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I've got x equals 0. For my first answer, I'm going to subtract 4. And that's going to give me x equals negative 4. Okay. Let's talk about... The square root property. Okay, moseying along here. Let's talk about square root property. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and give you the rules for the square root property and then we're going to apply them. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do when solving by the square root property is we're going to get the squared part by itself. Okay, get the squared part by itself. Okay, and by squared part, I mean we're going to get x squared by itself or sometimes it hides on us. And we're going to have a parenthesis with some stuff inside of it. And then that whole parenthesis is going to be squared. So we want to get x squared or a set of parentheses squared by itself. Okay, once we get that by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. Then we need to, when we take the square root of both sides, and most of you will kind of remember this maybe. If not, that's okay. Uh, we need to remember to put plus minus in front of the square root. Because here's the deal. If, we, if it was squared, then anything became positive. So when we take the square root, when we force a root, we have to put plus or minus in the front. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that means. So let's look at example four. I'm going to go ahead and flip the page. Uh, of course, you can pause the video to finish writing that. Example four says solve by 
the square root property. Okay? And I have 5x squared equals 45. Okay, our first step, if we go back and look, said that we needed to get the squared part by itself. Just the x squared or some parentheses that's being squared by itself. So I have 5x squared equals 45. Well, who needs to go away? The 5 needs to go away because it's sitting in front of the x squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And that's going to give me x squared equals 9. Okay, so now I've got the square root by itself. If we go back over and look, now we take the square root of both sides. All right, so I've got the square root of x squared equals, don't forget your plus minus, the square root of 9. Guys, you don't do it on both sides. You only do it on the one side where you've got the number or not just the x squared part, okay? Um, so now, guys, when I take the square root of a square, the inside falls out. So the square root of x squared is simply x equals, now I've got plus or minus, what's the square root of 9? 3. That's two different answers. You're probably going to need to write it as two different answers on your homework. They're probably going to want you to have like x equals negative 3 comma 3. You'll kind of have to play around with it, but this is really two answers, x equals 3, x equals negative 3. Okay, those are two separate answers when you have that plus minus in front of it. Let's do another one like that. We're going to do another square root property. This time, I have parentheses x minus 1 squared equals negative 9. Okay, and we'll call this b, part b. All right, is the x squared by itself or the parentheses squared by itself? Yes. It is. There's nothing sitting in front of that set of parentheses. It's okay that there's stuff inside the parentheses. You just have to get that big chunk parentheses that's being squared by itself. Now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of x minus 1 squared equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. It's okay. We know how to deal with the square root of a negative. On the left-hand side, it's real friendly. What happens when I take the square root of a square? Inside falls out. That leaves me x minus 1. Equals, okay, plus or minus the square root of, I'm going to go ahead and split that up. Negative 1 times 9. Okay, just keep that left-hand side going there. x minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Okay, I know what the square root of negative 1 is. We just took a test on that. x minus 1 is going to equal plus or minus i times what? What's the square root of 9? 3. We just need to write that a little nicer look in there. Let's clean it. x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3i. Okay, we still, the goal is to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And that's going to leave me with an answer of x equals 1 plus or minus 3i. Now, that does split into two answers. Your homework's probably going to want you to write it as two answers. This is really x equals 1 plus 3i and x equals 1 minus 3i. Okay? Remember that plus minus stands for two different answers there. Okay, let's look at, we'll just do a part, let's do a part C here. Okay, A, B, part C. And that's going to give me Let's see what it says, because I have them as separate here. We're still solving by square root property, and I have 2x squared, this one's going to be a little more work, not bad, minus 5 equals negative 55. So follow your steps, guys. The first thing that we need to do is we actually need to 
um, get the x squared part by itself. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to say plus 5, plus 5. And that's going to give me 2x squared equals negative 50. Okay, no biggie. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And that's going to leave me x squared equals negative 25. Okay, now I need to what? Take the square root of both sides. So I've got the square root of x squared equals, don't forget your plus minus, square root of negative 25. Okay, we know how to deal with all of that. Square root of x squared, x falls out. Because remember, it's like a square root undoes a square, and vice versa, a square undoes a square root, equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 25. Okay, now I can split that up a little more. That's going to give me x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. I get x equals plus or minus, well, the square root of negative 1 is uh, i times square root of 25 as 5. I'm going to write that neatly, and that gives me x equals plus or minus 5i. And remember, that's really two answers, and that's really x equals a positive 5i and x equals a negative 5i. Okay, let's talk about completing the square. Completing the square can, it's actually pretty simple, and we complete the square. It's not the easiest form of solving quadratics, but we complete the square so that later on we can find the vertex of a parabola. Okay, it all kind of goes together. You use it later on and when we talk about circles. And talking about circles is really cool. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the um, steps for completing a square. And then we're going to practice some problems just from following the steps, okay? So, completing the square. And what you're really doing, guys, is you're taking something that you cannot factor or use the square root property on, and I forgot the, uh, and you're turning it into an equation where you can use the uh, square root property, okay? Is what you're really doing. Okay. Um, the first thing when we're completing the square that we want to do is we want to set equal to zero. You notice that keeps coming back over and over again. Okay? Then we need to make sure the leading coefficient is one. Okay? Make sure the leading coefficient is one. Um, all your problems for this course, the leading coefficient should be 1 for completing the square. You shouldn't have any in this course where um, the leading coefficient is something other than 1. If you stumble across one of those, I didn't cut it out well, and you need to uh, alert me to that. Shoot me an email, say something in class, and I'll do it like I did the difference quotient, and I'll go back and give you credit for it. Okay? But the leading coefficient should be 1 on all of the completing the square problems. Let me know if you find one that's not. Um, then, once you do that, you're going to half the middle term, half the middle number, and we're going to put that in a cloud. Yes, I know. Put in a cloud. Okay, I know, kind of silly, isn't it? Helps me remember, though. Helps me pick it out. Then we're going to square the cloud. Kind of like we store stuff in the cloud these days. Okay. We want to, after that, we're going to add 
and subtract. the squared number okay then we get back to what we learned today we're going to factor it and then uh, solve by square root property ooh that's long isn't it solve by square root property and I'm going to need to switch pages Okay, I think, yep, I'm going to let you finish writing that down so you can have that in front of you so we can get started. Okay, now, I'm going to make a little note right here across from factoring because, you know, when we factor, we put it in the parentheses. And I'm going to give you a little hint here. Whatever is in... The cloud goes into the parentheses. Okay, and you'll see how that works. All right, now we all should have that going pretty good there. Um, I'm going to flip pages, so we should have that. Okay, I think we have that. Let's flip over here. And mine says example seven. I don't think we're on example seven because I put all those together. So that's example five, actually. Okay. So let's look at example five. It says complete the square and solve. All right. Okay, complete the square and solve. So the first uh, problem that we have is we have x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. Okay, so let's see what it says. It says set equal to 0. So who needs to move? The 8 needs to move. So let's follow our steps. We're going to move the 8 over. And I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Okay. Now, make sure the leading coefficient is 1. Well, let's go ahead and look. What's A? 1. What's B? 6. What's C? Well, that's 8. And no, you don't really need B and C for this problem, but this helps in a minute when we solve using the quadratic formula. Okay? So, A is 1, so we're good to go. Now, it says we want to half the middle number and put it in a cloud. So the middle number is the coefficient of just x. So you might want to put that over there where it says half the middle number put in the cloud. This is uh, the coefficient of x. Okay? All right, so who's the coefficient of the x term? Well, that's 6. So I'm going to say 6 times 1 half. Well, I know that's 3. I'm going to put that in the cloud. Now, this is where I told you when we go to factor, whatever's in the cloud goes in the parentheses. So we're going to just help ourselves out here and say this will go in parentheses in the factoring step. And I'll show you. It'll make perfect sense. Okay. All right. Now, what does it say? What's my next step? I have the middle number. I put it in the cloud. Now I'm going to square the cloud. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to square my cloud. And 3 squared, 9. You don't go back in the cloud no more. Good, we're 9. Okay, now it says add and subtract the squared cloud. Okay, so what we do is we take this equation that we made right here. And we're going to add in 9 after the 6x. So I'm saying x squared plus 6x plus 9. There's where I added him in, right there. Then, I still had that plus 8 from originally because we just can't go around adding in numbers. That changes the whole equation. 
So if I add 9, I have to subtract it because I don't want to change the equation. Now, this doesn't seem reasonable at first because it's like, well, you've not really done anything. That's 0. If I add 9 and subtract 9, that's 0. That's true. But let's go with it because we're trying to turn this into something we can solve, okay? All right. So now, this is the part where I factor. I'm asking myself what multiplies to be 9 and adds or combines to be 6. Well, I've already told you what's going to go in those parentheses, right? I said, well, who's ever in the cloud goes in the parentheses. And sure enough, 3 will go in the parentheses because what is 9? That's 3 times 3. And what is 6? That's 3 plus 3, okay? Now, I'm going to put just this 8 minus 9 together, and that's minus 1 equals 0, so, now let me ask you this. I've got x plus 3 times x plus 3. What's another way I can write that? What's another way I can write 5 times 5 without saying the answer? Or 6 times 6 with exponents. What's a way I can write 5 times 5 with exponents? Well, that's really 5 squared. What's 6 times 6? Well, that's really 6 squared. So, what's x plus 3 times x plus 3? That's really x plus 3 squared minus 1 equals zero. All right, guys, looky there. What do we see? We see that my pencil is not charged again. <laughs> I'll need to charge that tonight. Uh, what do we see? We now have some parentheses, some chunk of parentheses squared minus one equals zero. Now I can use my square root property. Okay, so what needs to go away? Well, that minus one. So I'm gonna add one now to both sides. Say so plus 1, plus 1. That's going to give me x plus 3 squared equals positive 1. Now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. So I've got x plus 3 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 1. Okay. Remember, when I square root a square, inside falls out. So I've got x plus 3 is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 1. Okay, well, what's square root of 1? That's x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. Move that 3 over, and you're going to notice something when you go to write the answer this time. x equals negative 3 plus or minus 1. Well, if I split that, that gives me x equals negative 3 plus 1 which is what? x equals negative 2. And then when I write down x equals negative 3 minus 1, well, what's negative 3 minus 1? That's x equals negative 4. So these actually work out to be really nice answers. They become negative 2 and negative 4. I'm not having, yeah, I got enough room to do example 6. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We started a new page there. All right, so let's look at example six. Now, here's why some of you could have, some of us could have uh, easily factored that, most of you. If you practiced enough, you could have told me three times three is nine and three plus three is six, and that's going to be x plus three times x plus three. You could have factored that without the cloud. Here's the reason that I show you the cloud because sometimes when it gets to be a fraction, it's not as friendly. And the cloud allows you to go, oh, I know what goes in there anyway, and you don't have to try to think about what's going to multiply to be this horrible fraction. Okay? So, I can go over here. Um, in example 6, let's look at this problem. We've got x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Okay, so is it set equal to 0? Yes. Is the leading coefficient 1? Yes, because I have a equals 1, b equals 7, and c equals negative 8. Okay. All right, so that's good. So now I'm ready to half the middle term. Well, the middle term is 7. 
half that. We don't want 3.5. I don't want decimal. Just make it a fraction. Remember, 7 times 1 half is really 7 over 1. And let me write that where you can see it better. Uh, that's really 7 over 1 times 1 over 2. Remember how I told you top times top, bottom times bottom. Just write it as 7 halves for me. Okay, that's 7 halves. That's your cloud. Remember, this goes in parentheses. Okay, now I'm going to say 7 halves. That was my cloud. I'm going to square it. Guys, multiplying fractions, top times top, bottom times bottom, 7 over 2 times 7 over 2. Those both look like 2s. Miss B needs to work on her writing. Uh, 49 over 4. Okay, it's all right. You don't have to. It's 49 over 4. What do I do with the 49 over 4? I'm to the now add and subtract the squared number. 49 over 4 is the squared number. So I go x squared plus 7x plus 49 over 4, minus 8, minus 49 over 4, equals 0. Okay. You're probably going to want to use your calculator a little bit. Let's factor. The factoring part's the easy part now for you because you got your cloud over there. I got my x. I got my x. What was in the cloud? 7 over 2, plus 7 over 2, plus 7 over 2. Okay, guys, I'm putting negative 8 minus 49 over 4 together, okay? Um, if I turn negative 8 over 1 minus 49 over 4, if I turn that into force, okay? So I've got my negative 49 over 4, and that's really 32 over 4, right? Negative 32 over 4 is really 8 over 1. So when I put those together, they already have a common denominator now. 9, 10, 11, carry a 1, 7, 8. That's negative 81 over 4. You're going, oh, that's horrible. It's not. This is going to work out great. Okay, we know how to write our x plus 7 halves times x plus 7 halves. That's x plus 7 halves squared. Uh, minus 81 over 4 equals 0. We're ready for our square root property. Yes, I've run out of room again. It's going to be okay. Uh, that gives me x plus 7 halves squared equals 81 over 4. All I did was add them to the other side. Now I'm ready to take the square root. I'm going to go up here and take the square root. So I've got the square root of x plus 7 halves squared equals, don't forget your plus minus, square root of 81 over 4, okay, well, that's x plus 7 halves equals plus or minus, take the square root of the numerator, take the square root of the denominator, so the square root of 81 is 9, the square root of 4 is 2, guys, it worked out nicely, uh, subtract the 7 halves, okay, so I get x, equals negative 7 over 2 plus or minus 9 over 2. Okay, when I get ready to split, that's x equals negative 7 over 2 plus 9 over 2. Guys, you can put it in the calculator if you want to. That's 2 over 2 equals 1. So I get x equals 1. Or I get x equals negative 7 over 2 minus 9 over 2 is negative 16 over 2, which is negative 8. So I get 1 and negative 8. Good job. There will be a question. They look more difficult. They're not. Um, it'll say, uh, what do we add? It'll say something like this. What goes in the blank to form a perfect square trinomial? Okay? And they're going to give you something like x squared plus 8x plus blank. Guys, all they're wanting you to do is the first part of completing the square. So, you literally just go 8 times a half. 
that gives you four. That's the cloud. Square the cloud. That gives you 16. 16 goes in the blank because to factor that, that would give me x plus 4 times x plus 4. Okay? Because it's a perfect square. It's a trinomial. It has three parts, x squared, 8x, and 16 has three terms. So that makes it a trinomial. It's a perfect square because 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 plus 4 is 8. Okay? Um, that there'll be a question or two like that. Okay? So, let's move on, and we're now going to do the quadratic formula, solving using the quadratic formula. And it's actually... Uh, the friendliest one, because all you have to do is pick out A, B, and C. Okay? But we can go and let's look at quadratic formula here. And then that will be the end. Once we get through quadratic formula, that will be the end of 1.5. And I'm going to go ahead and post that tonight. Um, so if we are given... Um, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, then we can say, we can solve, we can say X will equal, we can find our X intercepts, our root solutions by saying negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so let's, um, let's do, let's solve using the quadratic formula first, and then we're going to go back and we're going to talk about a special part of the quadratic formula known as the discriminant, and I'll show you some, an example of that also. So I'm on what, example eight? Okay, and example eight says solve using... The quadratic formula. Okay. And we have x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. So the first thing that we need to check, is it set equal to 0? Yes. Now, we need to, guys, if we're using the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And yes, I'll give you that on your formulas for a unit 2 exam. Okay, that means I need to know what a, b, and c equal. Okay, well, put that general form right there. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Well, a is 1. If nothing's in front of x squared, it's assumed to be 1. b is 8. c is 12. So, now I simply need to plug in a, b, and c. I need to plug the numbers in for the letters. So, that's going to give me x equals a negative 8. Because the negative was already there, guys. You're just plugging in the b. Plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12 all over 2 times 1. That gives me x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 48 all over 2. Okay, that gives me x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root, well, 64 minus 48 is going to give me 16 all over 2. Okay, that's x equals negative 8 plus or minus square root of 16 is 4 all over 2. Okay, now I'm ready to split that guy. Well, you can, um, we can split it. We need to go ahead and split it now, that plus minus. What does that really mean? 
That's really x equals negative 8 plus 4 over 2 and x equals negative 8 minus 4 over 2. Well, I know that's negative 4 over 2, which is going to give me x equals negative 2. Okay, over here I get x equals negative 12 over 2, and that gives me x equals negative 6. Okay. Now, Okay, so not too bad, right? Okay, what if now we're going to look at a special part of the quadratic formula? And I'm going to kind of show you right here because we're going to use this. I'm going to use this uh, example that we have. When I have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, this part right here, this b squared minus 4ac, is what we call the discriminant, okay? So a discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, okay? And the discriminant tells us what kind of answers we're going to get, what kind of solutions we're going to get, okay? If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, which means what? It's positive, okay? If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, it's positive, we're going to get two real solutions, that means we're going to get something that we can put on. It's going to be like negative 2 and negative 6. And I'm going to show you in a second how I knew we were going to get two real solutions. Okay, we're going to use that example. Now let's say b squared minus 4ac is actually less than 0. It's negative. Well, guys, I, that means I'm getting a negative answer. I'm getting a negative number inside that square root. And if I have a negative number inside the square root, what happens? I get an i back. And i's are imaginary numbers. And when I put it together with that b in the front, then I'm going to wind up getting a complex solution, okay? So, I'll get no real solutions. So, if that discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is less than 0, then that means um, I have no real solutions. Okay. Now, what if b squared minus 4ac equals 0? Okay. So it's actually equal to 0. Well, then I'm just going to get, if it actually equals 0, well, what's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. So I'm going to get one real solution. Okay? So you're going to have questions. Let's see if i got enough room. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Uh, like example 9, that might say determine... How many real solutions, if any, um, x squared, well, let's just use what we had a while ago, x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0 has. Okay, so we just want to know if it has any real solutions. We don't have to know. It's not asking me for them, so I don't have to use the entire uh, quadratic equation. All I'm going to need to use is the discriminant because the discriminant will tell me that. So I know I'm going to use just b squared minus 4ac. Okay, well, I still need to know a, b, and c. a equals 1, b equals 8, c equals 12. Okay, so that's going to give me... 
um, 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12. That's going to give me 64 minus 48, and 64 minus 48 is 16. So now all we do is we ask ourselves, is 16 greater than 0? Is 16 less than 0? Is 16 equal to 0? Well, we know that 16 is greater than 0, which means over here, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. It's positive. We have two real solutions because we got a number greater than 0. Okay, and we did work it out, and we saw we got negative 2 and negative 6. And that is all of 1.5, guys. And I will get that posted to YouTube, uploaded to YouTube, and then I'll post that to our Canvas page, okay? And I'll send out a reminder telling you guys that we do not have class tomorrow, which is Tuesday, um, June 9th, okay? Um, I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Bye, guys.